welcome to the talk show Promising Bangladesh sponsored by Crown Cement. Viewers, today we will discuss the issues centering 33 years of independence just begun. And then we touch on Ramadan, one of the holiest month in the life of Muslims. And to suit the very purposes, we have invited two guests. One is Professor Dr. Kulimullah. How are you? I'm very fine, thank you. And you? I will not introduce you because you are known to all. Thank you very much. Other being us. Barrister Muhammad Gulam Kabir Bhuya. Thanks for having me here, Mr. Former Sahib. Higher Executive Officer, United Kingdom Civil Service. And perhaps you are staying both in UK and Bangladesh. And you are also associated with Aumadi. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. How is yourself? Fine. Well, well, Professor Kolimullah, we are passing just step into the 53 years of independence. From 26th of March 1971 down to this day, right. what is the evolution? Well, uh, it was a long journey and uh, I would say in one sentence, we are doing well. Of course, there are a lot of ups and downs and it was not a smooth journey, but we are doing well at the moment, I hope so. Thank you very much. In a short note, Barrister Mr. Gulam Kabir Bia, this is your first appearance in our talk show. That's right. What is your focus of the years we passed so far? Last 53 years was a glorious for the world. The world should look. Look to the Bangladesh, look to the driver of Bangladesh. Think behind you. There is a dictionary of the world where he is saying promising Bangladesh. We are proud to be the Bangladesh. What I found on the 53 years is when I saw on the TV that uh, Rujina Begum from Jinaidor district, she is 62 years old. When she was crying and said to the people of Bangladesh that last 61 years I did not do my Eid in my own house. I was living in the slum, I was living next to the road, I was living to the my landlord. Now she has a house and the country and the Bangladesh provide her a piece of land with a tiny bit house. That's I found promising. That's I found for an example for the world. 53 years old country, there is no homeless people in this world. Think about the fourth largest economy of the UK. Lots and thousands and thousands of people is the homeless. But this small country, they don't have the homeless. What I can see, the Padda Bridge, what I can see, the nuclear plant, what I can see, the Metro Rail, that's the 53 years achievement. So, these 53 years is introduce ourselves across the world that we are a country, we belong to an own identity. We are Bangladesh and that Bangladesh was the dream of the father of the nation, the shepherd boy, the greatest Bengali, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. And also we can see the lead has been led by our leader, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Now this is what we found, 53 years and lots of country, 149 country in the world. Who have this dramatically improved? Who can build this metro rail? Think about the other countries, even in the South Asia. Think about the nuclear plant. Think about we are going to the, uh, uh, we have the submarine. Think about the international diplomacy. We are an independent country and we using our interest across the world, whether it is a United Nation, whether it is a war in the Ukraine and Russia, we show our independence, we show our freedom. And think about the people of Bangladesh. This, think about in this Ramadan month. Whereas, 34 percent people in the United Kingdom, they are using their credit card to buy their day to day commodities. 
and in Bangladesh this government giving the one core family card who can get the reduced product the price the essential items in the Ramadan. Can you imagine within the 53 years this government financially helped one core family which is five core people is benefited in this country that is we get. We get Rojina Begum, we get a lots of people thousand and thousand people we have the now so called the Asra and Prokolpo. So, is been domain across the world. So, yes we are the promising Bangladesh and thanks, thanks for your idea. The name of the talk show is flourishing us academically I can see the establishment blossoming, development maturing upshot head away blossoming. Where did you get this word from? This is the dictionary of Bangladesh. Think about the dictionary of other country who has the 200 years old. They do not have such kind of rich word and I am excited to come to your talk show. When I see this word then I feel so proud I am a Bengali, I am a Bangladeshi and I have a father of nation and I have a true leader who is lead the country in the right direction. So, yeah thanks again for having me here today. Thank you very much Professor Kolimullah. Yep. Barrister Gulam Kabir has drawn every wonderful paint picture from his own standpoint being a of member course. of Aumi League. As a professor of public administration at the same time you are a such a voice Thank you. that it speaks the truth and reality whatever it is. What are the loopholes of the government for the days of 50 years, 53 years? Well, uh, the legacy pathological aspects dysfunctional aspects are inherently there and uh, in such circumstances we will have to sort of reinvent the government. You know all the ideas of uh, new public administration should be inculcated and uh, age old bureaucratic style must be displaced by new public administration values and ethos. We will have to downsize the government and uh, the foundation which has been laid by the daughter of the father of the nation honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina you know uh, is there and uh, this uh, all sort of uh, digitalization and on top of that smartness package should be uh, sort of uh, established in a real sense of the term. I mean it should not remain as a rhetoric and uh, the quicker the better because uh, you know we are living in a turbulent world. Ukraine crisis has affected all the countries of the world and Bangladesh is no exception. So uh, and uh, for long 15 years the party in power is governing the country and uh, you know the mainstream other opposition parties such as BNP or for that matter Jamaat which has lost its uh, registration with uh, the election commission of Bangladesh. They did not participate in successive elections and uh, that is not a good sign. In order to have a vibrant democracy there should be plural space it must not shrink and uh, as non-governing elites they also have a role to play and uh, they should 
be very much part of the system shouldn't find themselves as non-entity or outsiders in the whole scenario. So, uh, as the party in power, the Wami League will have to be responsive and also more responsible. Try to go for soul searching. Why is happening like this? And, uh, you know, plural space must be defended at any cost. Voice of dissent must be heard. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Professor Kulumullah. Barrister Gulam Kabir. Plural, plural space should be made open to all. And do you think there is enough plural space in Bangladesh at the moment, especially the political rights? Uh, there are two answers of this question, Mr. Said. If you believe that Bangladesh is an independent country and we do the politics for the welfare of the people, then there is a lot of space. If you think that we want the power, does, doesn't matter whether you say through the peop people of the Bangladesh or through the proper democratic way, that's the different way you have to think. Think about the biggest opposition of Bangladesh, PNP or so-called the Jamaat and the BNP alliance. Now, the Ref BNP party, who is the chairman of the party? They are Khaladajia. But she has been Under the judgment of the High Court, she has been under like you know that uh, she been uh, see, uh, uh, if I'm wrong, it's uh, some sort of uh, penalty, say uh, three years or six years, if I'm not sure on the Orphanage Trust case. The judgment go against her. So according to the according to the uh, uh, like you know that the law, she is been uh, she is not eligible at the moment to run the chairman. On the other hand, her son, Tarek Ramban, she is also he is also been like you know that uh, like you know that uh, judgments against him. So in a political party, what they done? They change their own constitution. They, they change their own what is called uh, so called the leadership. You mean? Uh, no, no. The the uh, the is it called constitution for the political party? There is a book. The uh, what is called manifesto. No? Manifesto. Yeah. So their party manifesto suggested that that if someone is guilty through the court, he or she can still continue as a chairman. Thank you. We will come to you again. Viewers, we are going for a short break, and very soon we will be with you. Please keep watching. Welcome to the talk show, Provincial Bangladesh. We are back to the talk show again. And we are having talks with Professor Kodi Mullah and Barrister Gulam Kabir Bhuya. He is from UK. Mr. Gulam Kabir Bhuya, you are talking about constitution and manifesto political parties. And my main question was whether there is enough space in Bangladesh for political activities, especially for the opposition. Please be specific in your pronunciation, in utterance? Definitely there is. Think about the talk shows. People can come, they can say anything against the Prime Minister, against the government, nobody can stop them. The BNP has given the absolute freedom to their demonstration and they did call the meeting on the 28th of October 2023. But what the government or this country will not going to allow to vandalism, to firing, to erosion, this kind of terrorist activities, they are not going to allow this one. But if you want to do the think about before the 28th of October, they can they done the rally across the country, they done demonstration everywhere, they showed their play card, they blocked the route for so called hortal strike, this kind of stuff. Nobody stopped them. 
the police allow them, the law administration function allow them to do the all kind of things. But do you think that they wants to do the, wants to use the space? Definitely not. If you believe on democracy, if you believe that you done the politics for the people of the Bangladesh, you must trust and believe the judgment of the people. And to test the judgment of the people, you have to participate in election. Do you think that democracy is going to let from the London? The world has come from the London and or from the, uh, from the Gulshan. But if you want to do the democracy, if you want to do the politics for the people, you need to come on the street. You need to talk about the people. Did ever they talk about the price inflation? Did ever they talk anything about the general, general you know, that the problem facing the general people of Bangladesh? No. They are standing in one point. This government needs to step down. Why this government needs to step well, down? This I, is not I will the come to part of the politics. I will come to This government should step down. And that is the only logic propounded by Barrister Kabir. And he believes there is enough opportunity for all the political parties in Bangladesh, especially the political rights should be, should play alive anything. And being a chairman of Shani Pop, right. you are the worst of all these things. Right. How do you view all these things? Well, uh, you know, the demand for the establishment of caretaker government or reintroduction of caretaker government system uh, is the center point. I mean, BNP and uh, it's around 61 allies, registered or unregistered, whatever, maybe the status. They were waging this uh, movement for long and uh, boycotting successive elections one after another, centering on this issue. And uh, they're stubborn, I would say. They know that their support base is eroding, especially amongst the professional people, because those who benefited from BNP, they are also maybe uh, uh, lose, losing their confidence in a way, because uh, it's like chasing the chimera, you know. And uh, if you do not participate, you find yourself nowhere. And uh, that's the reality. So they, I would say they should come to their senses, take part in elections. And uh, if they win, they can always reintroduce a uh, category system and uh, they may even amend the constitution if they have absolute majority, if they can win absolute sort of uh, confidence of the people. So that should be the constructive way, uh, logical way to axe, the grind their axe. Thank you very much. Barisha Kobir, we'll switch over to his topics. There is Ramadan. We are having Ramadans and it's almost half, half of the month over. Everybody knows the people are very much frustrated having the economic scenario in Bangladesh. And prices of the daily necessities beyond the control. And we cannot even go to the market to buy things. It's a sense of suffocation everywhere. Why this thing should go when your party is in power? What the logic you have? Okay, so when you think about, when you say that uh, frustrated, yes, people should be frustrated. But the frustration, is it too long? I don't think so. Think about when the Awamili government take, taken the power in 2009. The Honorable Prime Minister declared that he will start initiate the proceeding of the war crimes. That times, all were frustrated. Some people were frustrated. Ah, she gonna start and halfway she gonna finish. But did it happen? No. She complete the judgment. 
and that execution has implemented. Think about the Padda bridge, the international and our internal people done some sort of hypocrisy or some sort of uh, activities to stop the Padda bridge, but what happened? She done it. Now, when you say my government, yes, I feel proud of my government, I feel proud of my leader and in the 12th parliamentary election on the first cabinet, their top priority is to reduce the inflation. Now, where I did see the hope is that happened in the January and uh, in the January, the inflation rate was 9.67, sorry 9.86, which now been reduced to the 9.67. Last night, I was browsing the newspaper on the internet and I can find that one on the last 10 days, there are 6 items has been reduced like our cooking oil, it was the 170 in the market which has been reduced to the 163, lentil it was the 110, now it has been reduced to the 105. Think about the brinjal, that been lastly reduced. Now, this government has taken some sort of short term measurement and the long term measurement. In the recent month, the one of the important thing on the price inflation is the dollar rate, how we fix the exchange rate. Now, we introduce a new system and that has a good implementation. The dollar price was 121 last week, now it has been reduced to the 115 to 116. So, that is the policy in place implementation, we reduce the tax cut on some essential commodities and also we put the price monitoring system and this government gives the hope, not only hope they implemented that one. Do you think the digitalization is a most important thing on the price monitoring? If I ask that accept my government, what you have done Mr. Saeed? Did you take your mobile in the Facebook and did you write that one? I went to the market and the price is 16 taka per kilo the brinjal. If we did that one, you could help the Bangladesh, you could help the people of the across the country. If someone write it down on the Facebook that okay, brinjal in Bagura district is 18 taka per kilo, and when I found on the market 80, 80 taka, if I work out the brinjal for a couple of days, the price will be reduced. For an example is the watermelon, the watermelon. So, we have to play the role Mr. Said. it is not the government, my government is doing with our best and I give you a couple of examples. This Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who is the leader of the economic like you know the development economy for this country, I can assure you this one within very short time which you can see now, inflation is reducing whereas, think about South, just Southeast Asia, do you know the inflation rate in Pakistan is 28 percent. Do you know the inflation rate in the India is 13 percent? Do you know the other countries? Whereas, our reduce has been from reducing and this government has a target, they are going to reduce the inflation to the 7 percent. Now, there are some sort of middlemen across the world, across the country, because if you see on the high price hike or the inflation, there are two things. One is production and up to the you know that on the consumer levels. Between these, there are some sort of middlemen, and only the daughter of the father of the nation, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, has that courage to say anything and to take action against anyone. She act on that one. Doesn't matter who going to make the phone call, whether uh, uh, like you know that uh, Obama, Barack Obama, or Donald Trump. In that case, in that case, you believe the market is under control. Market is getting under control. It's going to take time because economy is not an easy it will factor. It take time that means after Ramadan. No, you that can look, Khan said I said you there are two kind of step. One is as a, you know the temporary one is the long term. On the temporary, do you believe that this government provided the 58 million people, there are different kind of allowance, old age allowance, disability allowance, there are widow allowance and lots of things. Not only this one, there are one core family, they are getting the family card to buy the domain, uh, the, the uh, essential items in the Ramadan, they given the you know that the well, I have the full price of that one. So, I, one I, core family. I will come to you because you have, uh, you have given me a very wonderful lengthy 
least of success of the government. No problem. We are talking about the Ramadan and the challenges before the people. Professor Kolimullah, do you find any challenge centering the Ramadan? The sense of Ramadan is kind of a sacrifice, you know. You refrain from your temptation and uh, here there's a big test, you know. At individual level, uh, people are fasting and again, immediately after break, they break their fast, they start eating <laughs> like a voracious eater, which uh, is not very healthy for a person. So, uh, at individual level, we should try our best to cut the consumption because that's why uh, it has been introduced, you know, so that you can uh, realize how you feel when you starve, you know, I mean, like your uh, other friends who are not well to do in the society how they are leading their life so that you can uh, compare and identify yourself where you stand. So at personal level, I mean, conscientization can be a package, you know, which can be uh, propagated by even all political parties. Thank you, Professor Kolimullah. We are going for a short break. Viewers, we are going for a short break and we will be with you very soon. Please keep watching. We are back to the talk show, Promise Bangladesh, sponsored by Crown Cement. And we were having talks with Professor Koli Mullah and Barrister Gulam Kabir Bhuya. Well, Mr. Gulam Kabir Bhuya, you know very well, the election in India is going to take place very soon. And there is a very wonderful picture in India because BJP under the leadership of Mr. Modi is likely to win the election very soon because there is a prediction also. And do you think this election will have impact on the politics of Bangladesh? Over. The politics and the election is and the country and the neighborhood country is in a one boundary. Overall, election in India shouldn't have any kind of impact in Bangladesh politics at all because India is an independent country whereas Bangladesh is an independent country and India is our best friend and also the best supporting head for our developing aspect as well as our uh, friendly cultural and everything. Whoever going to win the election whether BGP or the other party is that there are two alliances. So, whichever alliance they are going to win is up to the decision of the people of Republic of India. Now, what we need to see that whether our friendship and observation on the international standard is keep continue as it is or not. Our 53 years history is strongly supported and strongly Elemented by the Indian government. I believe that despite being whichever party they coming in the next general election, India and Bangladesh always work shoulder to shoulder. We have a heritage, we have a long history of helping hand, we have a long history of standing with one another and this is called diplomacy. If you think on the dip like again you need to be very clear that we are an independent country. I give you another example about this uh, 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 about this kind of issue like think about the Iraq sorry Ukraine and Russia war. What was the standing point of India and what was the standing point of Bangladesh. In Bangladesh they did not vote in, in favor of the Russia uh, sorry in favor of the Ukraine whereas India they supported the Ukraine because they did work in the shoulder to shoulder of the USA. So, geogra ge geographical politics is totally depend on the different angle, but when you work shoulder to shoulder you need some people 
who was shoulder, shoulder to shoulder for development of the country, like UK and USA. They always act in one principle. Well, I, I will come to you again. Professor Kalimullah, Barrister yes, Kabir made a very idealistic approach, and which is very, very much normal in foreign policy <laughs> matter. But everybody knows India is a factor in the politics of Bangladesh. Of course. And both position and oppositions, they feel on the very bosom of heart and realities. The role of India is very big here. Even the Secretary General of our Mali himself asserted that had there been no India, the foreign powers could have done so many things in Bangladesh. So, India is a factor here. Even the foreign ministers also say the so. Keeping all these things in a one pocket, yeah. non box, do you feel that the coming election to the parliament in India is, is a matter of further realization for us? Yep, you know, uh, it's a different ball game, of course. I mean, in India, we know that they have elections on a staggered basis, it's not one day game. So, uh, that's, uh, it has regional and other realities uh, and uh, it's a huge big country, you know, one of the largest democracies in the world. And uh, it's a regional power and uh, it didn't sign nuclear non-proliferation treaty, so it's a member of the elite club and a strategic partner of uh, United States of America and Israel. And it has uh, uh, land boundary dispute with uh, China. But again, uh, you know, they are sort of uh, first developing as a maritime power too. By now, they have become a uh, blue water navy, uh, naval force, you know. And uh, their uh, technological uh, race is, uh, I'd say, fantastic. I mean, they are achieving in a fast pace. But again, uh, people. Uh, in places like Kalahandi in India, they survive on ants, you know. And uh, people in some places of Hunsur, their staple diet is ragi, grass seed. So uh, the society is highly stratified and also there's a caste problem, which is perennial. Religious harmony is not there in that sense of the term, which can be termed as ideal. Even in southern India, in the Christian community, I found that uh, in the churches, the separate uh, glasses for higher caste Christians and lower caste Christians, you know, those who are converted into Christianity, still uh, caste system is there. So, uh, against such uh, all these realities, I mean, uh, you can say that uh, it's not an easy game. I mean, India has a long way to go. In terms of, uh, you know, toilet facilities, they are far behind Bangladesh, I'd say. You know, we are uh, sort of, uh, compared to them, we are a very homogeneous country and uh, pace of development is also uh, better, I would say, in that sense of the term. And uh, we have a uh, fast pass the post system. They also have fast pass the post system. There are similarities as well as dissimilarities as well. So, uh, you know, uh, we will have to wait and see what happens after the election is over. Thank you very much. Barrister Kabir, last comments from you. One more thing I try to uh, tell you that you suggested uh, that uh, it's highly likely Narendra Modi will gonna come to power again. 
it is a good for Bangladesh, it is good for BNP. Now, you can definitely ask the question why good for BNP. Like I believe that will be the third term for the Narendra Modi. Now, when Narendra Modi came power in first term, Aumili did not distribute the suite, it is the BNP who distributed the suite in their office in the street, the Narendra Modi came power and there will be dramatical change in Bangladesh. But one thing the you need to remember that uh, they are our developing partner, their internal election whoever coming as a power whether BGP or Congress, they are going to lead the India, they will not going to lead the Bangladesh. Think about the last election in uh, 12th parliament election, it has been crystal clear. India suggested that the election of Bangladesh is absolutely their internal matter, and Bangladesh belongs to the people of Bangladesh, not belongs to the any other external countries. So, if you are right that Narendra Modi will going to come, then I can think that. BNP is uh, looking something very good, they might going to engage themselves actively in the politics of Bangladesh, they might going to engage rectify their party, they might going to change their constitution, because if BNP wants to do the politics, politics should be a fair person, not a guilty person. The chairperson of BNP and the vice chair is BNP, both is the guilty person and I feel very shame because this country there is a party whose constitution has been written down that a guilty person will be the chair of that party. In this world I can't imagine this one, in black and white you write this one. Now we hope the best for the Indian election and again Bangladesh position is very clear. Whoever going to win the election, that is the decision of the people of the India, but as a Bangladeshi, as a long standing partner, as our best friend, we must going to work shoulder to shoulder India, whether BGP or Congress going to come power, that will not going to make any difference. Bangladeshi people always welcome India and Indian people always welcome Bangladesh and that is our stand and that will continue Thank for you. a prosperous and rising Bangladesh. Thank you Barrister Kabir. Professor Kalimullah, conclusion please. Well, uh, you know uh, as a developing country, we are sort of uh, doing well I would say and compared to India or Pakistan or other countries in the region. and. Uh, we have a long way to go as well. So, in this month of Ramadan, I would say that as persons, individual level, at individual level, we should try to uh, observe Ramadan in real sense of the term. We should consume less and also we should try to purify ourselves and take this opportunity. Then what is your understanding about the Citizenship Amendment, Amendment Act, which is of. being implemented in the very soon, especially in Assam. There is a Muslim group, Mia. I know, I know. And they are facing so many problems because of the Hemant Sharma, the yeah. Chief Minister of Assam. What is? He has uh, come up with a clarion call that those who belong to the Muslim community, around 60 lakh or so, uh, whose case has been cleared, they should uh, try to assimilate themselves with the Assamese culture and values. They should uh, start sending their kids to schools, not madrasas, and they should also stop practicing polygamy and uh, adhere to Assamese values. And I think this will create further a deterioration of uh, communal harmony and uh, 
it's not a good sign, I would say. Thank you very much, Professor Kunamurla, and thank you very much, the Barrister Kabir. We are about to end this talk show. Well, viewers, we are going to end this talk show. And before ending the talk show, I have to summarize. This piece has made the two giant speakers here. Both of them are very much aware of what is happening in Bangladesh and they feel that Bangladesh is moving onward without a break. And what the problems we have, especially during the Ramadan, Barrister Covid believes everything is under control, it's going to be controlled and people should not get frustrated. On the other end, Professor Karimullah, being very close to the people and the intellectual arena, feel that market is not still under control and the people is still suffering a lot of things. At the same time, I raise the question to, to them, what about the election in India? Barrister Kobir believes whoever in power in India doesn't matter because Bangladesh shall maintain brotherly relations with India. On the other hand, Professor Kolimullah believes the persons in the party power in India is a factor to Bangladesh, especially the present regime in India under the leadership of Modi is very much sympathetic to the party in power of Bangladesh under the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. So, there is a close nexus between the two. So, if there is no change, if Modi comes to power, Citizenship Act, Amendment Act, which is a very dangerous act for the people of Bangladesh also, and other measures taken by the BJP government. Few measures go against Bangladesh spirit and the people, and the Muslim in, in fact. And we don't know what will happen, but so far the political landscapes in India, we foresee that BJP under the leadership of Modi is sure to go to power again. And Modi means India, Modi means India under leadership of Hinduism. That is a new concept deviated from the very concept of secularism and enshrined in the constitution of India. And we don't know, but we still believe Bangladesh is Bangladesh. We must raise head high in pride, not shamed out under any circumstances. And that is a message. All. And thank you very much.